I have been taking you along as we transform our 1970s fixer upper and one of the weirdest things about it is this caged in jungle. We have slowly been hacking away quite literally, taking out all of the plants. Many of these were extremely toxic to children as well as very, very overgrown. Our goal for this space is to turn it from this outdoor jungle into a beautiful Spanish Mediterranean courtyard. In part one of this patio makeover, I showed how we created a small paver patio over on this side of the patio where we get shade throughout most of the day. We have some big design plans that I shared in part one. So if you missed that, you may want to go check that one out. But this is where we left off. It was pretty much a blank canvas and a mud pit. But in this video, I will be showing you the final design that we came up with these edging stones, as well as we will be going to the nursery for some beautiful plants, as well as some planters. And we will finally get to bring in the thing that this mama is most excited for. Hello guys, you're definitely getting a little sneak peek over here of our final transformation, but this just arrived today. I've been cleaning up a little bit and then we're gonna open this at the end of today's video. This is just a little something to add to this garden to make it extra special to us. So I cannot wait to show you all that we have done and we have a lot to cover. So let's go ahead and dive right in. <laughs> So a quick reminder to our design plans, if you missed part one, the middle is going to be turf and then the area that's right next to the concrete patio will actually be gravel to help with drainage. So that needed to be about three inches down and then the area in the center needed to be about five inches down to accommodate leveling sand underneath the turf. We took a few tries getting these lines exactly how we liked them. First, they were too curvy, then too straight. I absolutely cannot recommend enough the design of this type of edging stone. I will show you guys how it works because you can create any shape that you want and it doesn't have gaps in it. I mean, just look how perfectly that works. I think this is just an engineering marvel. <laughs> So this took a, a lot of work tampering everything down and breaking it to get it nice and smooth and compacted. And it was so many wheelbarrows of dirt. Shoveling dirt is just no joke, we learned. And then my parents arrived. Look who's here. Thank goodness, because they are the hardest workers and were able to start helping us really tackle this project all day while well, they were here for about four days. So you're going to see this place completely transform quickly. We brought in lots and lots of the leveling sand that has been sitting in our driveway into this middle section. And my dad used a level and was able to get all of these edging pavers in perfectly. Then it was time to start preparing for our rocks. So using this Max Weed Control fabric, I was able to add this into the area where we will have our rocks, which are a pea gravel that is a tan color. You'll see a wire running here that I'm holding out of the way, and that's because we're also going to have lighting coming up through the rocks, and it should make a really huge impact and make it look like a resort out here. Then I almost forgot to pull the wire out, so I made a little slit there and pulled that wire out so it was on the top of this fabric, and then it can sit underneath all of the rocks. We used galvanized garden staples to hold down this fabric, and although we'll have a ton of rocks on top of it holding it down, we just wanna make sure that it's not seen because that always looks really bad if you can see the fabric peeking through any of the rocks or mulch or that kind of stuff. This really was a whole family affair. Both of my boys were out here in the heat, so we were using lots of popsicles and water to keep them cool and just taking turns who was helping with them. on day two you probably barely hear me because we have a million fans up but we have this tent it's been saving us and we are working on compacting all of this so that we can put turf in the middle and then the lighting is what my dad is going to start working on now we would walking in the autumn breeze your eyes dance when you saw the color of the leaves Shallow, 
and then it was time to do some shopping for this place so we headed to a local nursery where they have a huge selection of pots this was actually just their clearance rack so we checked this out first to see if we could get lucky and we did so we found some really beautiful ones in here these were 20 and 40 percent off but to give you an idea most of these in full price were around 400 dollars. so these are not cheap these are a huge investment but these pots in here were very high quality and will really help the entire patio come together and make it look very high end yeah it is cool we do plan to get a wall style fountain for over on that paver patio that we created, but this one was very expensive. This was their selection in the non clearance rack. And as you can see, it was just enormous. I have really never seen some of these glazing techniques where they have some almost crackling and then different textures on the pot. I'll show some close ups of the ones that we really liked. They also just had some really beautiful shapes, super tall ones that would be such a statement as well. And then it was time to take a look at the plants. Now we are trying to go for a Spanish Mediterranean look out here to match the style of our home. And so one of the things that we definitely want to add is board Via. I might be saying that incorrectly, but it comes in all of these beautiful color variations and is a good plant for climbing high and is very easy to maintain. This nursery was massive, so they let you just take one of their golf carts to see all of the inventory that they have. They have most of it grouped up towards the front so that you can sample it. Man, it's just massive. It just goes on and on and on. We have filled up the back of our golf cart and started making some arrangements of the plants that we liked and just seeing how they would layer together, specifically thinking about how the things in the back are meant to grow taller, what we could layer out in front of that. We filled up our entire golf cart and then in true Florida fashion, it started pouring on us. <laughs> but the members of the staff here were super helpful and helped us load everything up into our car. And we filled up the entire back with plants and pots. So this is one of the ones that my parents purchased that will stay with the home <laughs> because it is massive <laughs> and quite the statement in here. This was a big day of shopping yeah, because then we other. headed to the hardware store to get the so turf. The on this. Who knows? I don't know. This is longer, clearly. Right. It looks weird. But it's I mean, it's so like, long, so then it's going like, to yeah, flop yeah. over and you're going like, to see footprints in it. Okay, okay. But this one will just be pokey standing up. Yeah. Why don't we just get under here for 20 feet of this? Way? It'll be easier to fit in the car, too, because it's not as thick. No. So we decided to go with the high quality pet turf, which has a little bit of a shorter blade, just because we thought that it looked the most realistic. And then these awesome gentlemen helped us cut it and wrap it. And it kind of fit into our car. <laughs> As you can see behind me, we're starting to see the vision out here. So let me give you a tour of what we've got going on, including the boys in the splash pack. Pardon our mess, but as you can see, we have our patio over here and we got a lot of plants yesterday, including some pots as well. And then my mom put in all of the gravel in this section and we need to do the same thing over here. And then I cannot wait to show you these on because it transforms the place. We're going to finish the leveling today. As you can see, it's a little bit off level. There's a little bit of a dome in the middle which is okay. We do want it to be a little bit of a dome since it'll settle and we don't want it to be a concavity there, but we want it to be very flat and smooth so that there's no bumps when you're walking on the turf. We bought the turf last night. So once we get that put in tomorrow with Dominic's help while he's off on Saturday, it's going to transform this space and make it look very like lush and green in here. And it's gonna look amazing.
We used this just long piece of lumber to help level things out, but leaving a slight dome in the middle, just trying to get everything perfectly smooth and compacted, even though we've already at this point compacted it a few times as well as watered it down, which is supposed to help sink it down a little bit more as well. I just think these clips of me leveling with this hand compactor are hilarious because it looks like I'm just waddling like a penguin. But what I'm doing here is lifting it up a few inches off the ground and then letting it go. When it hits the sand, it vibrates a little bit and helps compact things down. You want to make sure that you're not actually holding on to it while it's vibrating because that can rest on your back. While I was working on this and my mom was entertaining the boys, my dad was installing the outdoor transformer. This needed to be installed to convert the correct voltage to low voltage. I believe that's how it works. And then also this will allow us to control those lights from our phone and have them on a schedule. My parents mostly played around with the arrangements of the plants and I really, really love what we came up with. It offers a lot of symmetry so that the two sides have a balance and they match, but that there's little clusters of spaces that will be special and I'll tell you exactly what's going to be going into those special spaces later in this video and that will probably get done in the next video. <laughs> Dirty boy. We had to hold off until the following day to plant the other side and you will see why. But we were able to plant this side and it just made the whole vision come to life because these plants in here just added so much life and that cool garden feel that we were going for. Benjamin was being completely ridiculous and entertaining us all. We are going to transform this space today. We are going to put turf everywhere that the sand is right now. Right now we are just tampering it down for the last like compaction. <laughs> Still waving. And then all of the plants are gonna go in on this back little dirt patch there. Bye bye. <laughs> These are the plants that we've ended up with. We have a crown of thorns here, which we're going to put into a little like Marian garden. And then this is a lime tree, I believe. Yes. And then we have some white flowers, Lanterna, I wanna say it is. This one, I really love this Texas sage because it has this very like minty color that I feel like is very Spanish Mediterranean. We've already planted one of them here. The other one is going to go in this corner here and they'll get fairly large. And then all of these grasses are actually African lilies. So they'll have a white flower. This one is a different type of grass, but that one is gonna go um, over here somewhere. And then these are the flowers that are really going to drive home the Spanish Mediterranean look. They are, I always mess up this name, Borgenvia. And I'll insert some pictures of the inspiration that we have going on for these. We had hoped to put them here on this wall with the fountain over here, but they need a lot of sun. And this area gets a lot of shade in this. That's why we put a patio there. So we're going to use trellises and make some sort of wire thing for them to climb up on this spot here to give us a little bit of privacy and shade as well. These are a bird of paradise. You can see we already have one planted there. The other one is going to go over here to create some symmetry. And then before I knew it, my strong family was moving in the turf. And this roll was so massive that that is why we could not plant the plants on that side of the garden because it was <laughs> wide enough that it covered completely all of that dirt. You'll see once we lay it out. <laughs> 
roll it, roll it. This roll was so massive and awkward. 12 feet to be exact, so it was a little bit too long to fit easily between those columns. That's why you saw Dominic and my dad lifting it up through there, but the kids absolutely loved it as soon as we got it down. They were super excited to run around on it. Come on, kiddos. And we had to kick them out though because it was time to start cutting. And this was a process that took a lot of precision. My dad and Dominic did this one. Typically when you are cutting turf, you do cut it from the opposite side so that you don't damage any of the blades. But we had to cut in a curve and that would have just been impossible to make it as exact without cutting it from the top where we could see what position we needed it in. Expert turf layers might cringe at the way that we're doing this, but it turned out just fine. It looks really good. To keep it from moving around, we use these galvanized turf spikes. They are quite massive and they have a big head so that it can actually grab the turf and doesn't move. So when you hammer it in, you'll see that head and then you kind of have to pick the blades of grass out from around it so that it covers up the head. And then it was time to start arranging these plants back in here. This little outshoot that we have here, we have special plans for. And so the two Borgenvias went in here. And then ta-da, look at that. My parents and Dominic killed it on getting all of these plants in here with the mulch on top and it looked so nice. So I came back outside after getting the boys down for their naps and falling asleep myself. This heat has been no joke out here. And so I took over some watering just to get these nice and watered down so that they can have the best possible chance for survival out here. And then it was time to add this artificial grass infill. This helps the grass stay put and feel nice and heavy, not like it's shifting underneath your feet. It also helps the blades of grass stand up a little bit straighter. And so Dominic came up with this system to shake it on here, spreading it, and then using a broom to help push it down into all the cracks. We decided we needed one more planter and we headed to Home Goods, and thankfully they had like three more planters left from their summer because everything was on clearance. We were able to get this one for a great deal. We had a lot of cleanup in here and we were also working on the front of the yard, which I don't show just for privacy reasons. But this rock went up to the front so that it could add to our collection up there. After my parents left, I took a good week off from being outside in the heat. It was killing us, but it was about an inch of dirt everywhere on this concrete patio. So this was a big job cleaning this up. And then we were able to roll out the rug that we've had for a while and add the furniture that we've had for a while. I do plan to replace this eventually, but for now this works. I got these mats at Ikea and I really like the design of them. I need to go back and get one more. This is how it looks. It's very nice. And then over here is just our pile of storage. This is just how it's gonna be. This is reality. We have a bunch of tile under here that we plan to use for the house, but let's just look at this angle. Okay, so like I mentioned in that little spot where the Borgen Via is, we're thinking that we're going to actually have to create an arbor for it to climb on so that it doesn't climb on the screen because it has these thorns that we're thinking could possibly tear the screen lanai, especially when we get a lot of wind, which it is Florida, we're coming up on hurricane season and it could definitely happen. But what we wanna put in there is actually a statue of something that's very special to our faith, which is a Mary statue. We do not pray to Mary, <laughs> just want to explain that a little bit, but she is definitely a role model for me as a mother. And so I cannot wait to see how this one looks. It was beautiful online, so let's see. <laughs> Yes. Wow, they put zero padding in this, so I really hope she's not broken. <laughs> she looks good. Yeah, not broken. Wow. Oh, beautiful. We got this Mary statue from Wayfair. I will link it down below. I will say that it isn't like the best quality, but it was a great price. I'll also link the lighting that we got and love as well as any of the other little pieces that I've picked up. And there are still a few things that I am keeping an eye out for while thrifting. All right, my hair is wild. It's been raining. <laughs> I definitely did a workout class this morning and I've not showered since then because mom duties. But let me go ahead and remind you what this space looks like before. Now for the after. All right, 
So I'm about to show you how this looks at night because it looks good here, but at night, I gotta say it looks pretty magical. But I want to just say a huge thank you to my parents. You guys saw how much they were working in this place. Yard work is always pretty brutal, but especially doing it during a heat advisory warning in Florida, we were all definitely beat to say the least, but we have already enjoyed this space with company. We had a sprinkler out in the middle of this turf area, and then we've been playing soccer in the middle as well with Gideon, and we just enjoy it so, so much. So if you enjoyed following along with this process, I hope that it was inspiring. I would so appreciate if you would give it a like. That really helps support the channel. You can comment down below as well, even just an emoji. That also helps support the channel. This channel has been growing a lot lately, and I just want to thank you all so much because you watching week after week really helps support my small family. So thank you all so much and I will see you in the next one.